Fall on the bowl and kiss you in the dark. Fall on the bowl and bowl and call. I am here once again with Enioc from All at Sea, uh, my dear clanmate, and we have been testing the uh, third round of the CV rework. Um, you're probably all aware that um, there's been some testing going on of a new version of the carriers, um, and I actually haven't shared any of that myself, but um, I've got some footage which um, we're going to be having a chat uh, over the top of. Um, we've both played uh, a bit of uh, both lines of uh, both nations of the uh, of the Japanese and the American uh, carriers that are in the test, and we've also played some surface ships. So I'm going to be showing some footage from that uh, while we talk. So hello, Enioc, how are you? Blog, fine. Having me again. No, you're very welcome. So, um, so I guess you you played more kind of IGN uh, CVs than than I did. I played yeah, more American. Yes. Yes, I'm a Japanese fanboy, so... And, and I'm an uh, American fanboy, so that, that kind of makes sense. <laughs> Excellent. So, um, thinking back to the, the Carrier Reworks objectives, and, and let me just recap quickly. So, it was intended to reduce the learning curve for new players, because Wargaming, and actually the community's opinion, was that it was too difficult to play the top-down RTS version of Carriers compared to the surface ships. And and then also there was a thing, a, a knock-on effect of that, where very good players could easily dominate a match. So let's just talk about those two things for a second. So the learning curve thing, what's your impression about the learning curve of the new <laughs> format? Okay, I think they've lowered the skill floor quite a bit. So it is going to be considerably easier, in my opinion, to do adequately well. But the the important thing is that the main controls now are the same as a ship, as yeah, a surface so, ship. So do you think, for, so for veteran players perhaps who've never played carriers because it just didn't appeal to them, mm -hmm. yeah. do you, I, I get the impression that jumping into one of the planes is probably it, going to be reasonably easy because you're used yes. to that kind of control. Yes, um, I agree. And actually, most games, you know, it's WASD control, most games use that anyway. So if mm -hmm. you've played any games, pretty much you're going to be okay. Now, the, the important thing is that it overlaps. It, it partly the control scheme partly overlaps with the the not the the surface ships, so it's not a completely different interface to play. No, uh, you're, surface you're, ships and carriers, and, which I think is a good. Th you're basically playing a very very fast uh, destroyer at altitude. Yeah, pretty, <laughs> yes, much. pretty much. Pretty much, yes. Um, so, uh, I mean, how difficult did you find it when you were trying out the the attack uh, the attack planes, which is the rockets? Everyone's just calling mm -hmm. it rockets. Um, the torpedo bombers and the dive bombers. How did you find the relative difficulty of those? Because I struggled a little bit, if I'm honest. Uh, yeah. So this was the first time I tested mm. carriers. Uh, I haven't participated in the previous test session, so I wasn't completely familiar with the the time it took for an attack plane, for instance, to fully zoom in, give yeah. you the full accuracy. Because one of the things you have to keep in mind is that you don't click an attack as you used to do with previous carriers. You need to set up mm -hmm. an attack run. Mm -hmm. It's very stars it's very star Star Warsy. Yeah, and that. I and, and to be honest, that is the bit that I love the most about this yes. was, was yes. playing the torpedo bombers particularly. Oh, but you God, get it. Yeah. You get it a little bit with the others, but it's that where you swoop down to the water's um, edge, and yes. I can probably find some footage of that to match this. But um, you swoop down to the water, and then you're because um, the attack runs quite long. I mean, on the um, the high tier Americans, I don't know about the Japanese, but the attack run is something like twenty seconds. You've got, and so you can come in from quite a long way away. Yeah, and uh, and like the, the flax going past you, and the water's rushing underneath you, and, and the just, targets growing larger, yeah, yeah, and and, and, and maybe and maybe turning. And one of the things I found difficult was um, how much to lead it because there's no uh, yes, then no there's guidance. no gray line. Um, there's no gray line. If you play a destroyer and you're um, you're one of those people, or people who keep sending their torpedoes, yeah, just shoot down the gray line onto the gray line. Yeah. Stop doing. That. Um, um, but did you? So I found. So particularly with battleships, for example, which are quite slow to react, um, I found it very difficult from that low point of view 
to judge whether they were turning or not. Yes. Um, because uh, the you silhouette doesn't you, really change. Yes, you don't get a good idea of how fast they're going either, because mm. you're closing your range, and the target's moving as you're moving. Yeah. It's growing bigger, and it's not quite clear. Mm. I found myself looking at the minimap a lot to check angles and things to see if they were turning, because mm. it's easier yes. on the minimap. Yes. Yeah. Um, also, but... I don't know about the American high-tier carriers. Uh, I know that, that with the Japanese. But you drop your torpedoes, particularly with the torpedoes, you drop your torpedoes quite a long way away. Uh, you can. So Yeah. Um... No, uh, you're, you're obliged to with the Japanese carriers. The, the arming distance is huge. Oh, okay. Yeah, with the Americans, so... you can go quite close. Um, so, I mean, I guess you have to find that balance between um, dropping close and obviously having a very good chance of hitting, um, especially if you take the uh, the torpedo, um, you know, increased speed, decreased range. Yes, the um, which is still which is still a skill. Um, but the problem with that is you're flying all the way into their AA and you have to fly all the way out again. And I think based on how difficult it is to land the torpedoes, particularly on the lower tiers where you only perhaps have two torpedoes in a run, it's extremely difficult to hit with them. And uh, if you're trying to do it at a range, Kuryu, it's just going to be impossible. Kuryu, the, the tier 10 Japanese area, hmm. drops two torpedoes per side. Even up to tier 10? Even up to tier 10. You've wow. got a choice. You can, either, you can either drop four torpedoes, which require which I think have a four kilometer arming range, mm. or you can drop two torpedoes at a reasonable range. Yeah, sure, which, sure. And actually hit the target. Yeah, okay. Um, so, but I, I think it, it is possible to, to drop from long range and you, for your planes to remain undetected, which is an interesting possibility. Um, particularly if you then use the rest of the squadron to go on and spot something, perhaps you could do like a little drive-by torping and then um, particularly at the beginning of a match perhaps where people are still getting into position particularly in competitive yeah um, yeah it could work that, that could work but but generally because because now concealment expert works on yes exactly yes exactly um so I, I think being sneaky is definitely a possibility um, but you would have to be very good at aiming very very good yes and, and anyone who says you know i've heard a few few comments um no skill uh, yes. uh, yeah no skill required it's just point and click it is absolutely not um and, not. and moreover i think that the three different types of planes that we have at the moment in tests so the the rocket planes the attack planes the mm -hmm. torpedo bombers and dive bombers they all require different uh skill they do they do um, uh top they... tier i fell in love with the attack oh yeah so i i didn't i didn't get on with the rockets i think what it was was that i wasn't you could, and uh, you know, people watching this will probably be able to see that I wasn't uh, allowing enough time in the run-up. Yes. Um, so because it's it's not as obvious because when you're when you're flying the torpedo bombers, you get that lovely triangle which narrows down into the the alley. Mm -hmm. um, but on the attack planes, and a, a bit less so, but on the uh, dive bombers as well, you get that uh, the oval. And on the dive bombers, the oval reduces, but on the attack planes. It's just the tiny little ticks, the tiny little crosshairs inside that which reduce. And it's not as obvious what you're doing. It's not as obvious how accurate you're going to be. What what I did with uh, Hakuri especially, which has a huge salvo of rockets, is I would start my attack run before I... I would start with an attack quadrant, and I would start my attack run before I spotted a single enemy ship at early game. Mm. Well, and Because... It takes like ten seconds to get the full, to get full uh, accuracy. And if you start the attack run, say over the cap, you've reached, you've spotted the first enemy destroyers by the time your reticule reaches full accuracy. Well, so I had a very interesting time. I think I'll, I'll try and find the footage, but I, I think I was playing the midway. It might have mm -hmm. been the Lexington, and I was chasing uh, Shima. And, yes. Um, they were so difficult to spot because you are, particularly if you're using attack planes, you are going so quickly. Yes, by the time you've yeah. spotted them, you've gone over them. It's way too, way too late. So you have to guess where they're going to be, um, and then you have to start your attack run and try and time it so that when they appear, you're in the right place. Your aiming's on point, and if you miss, if you if you don't guess correctly where they're going, um, you can't turn very easily because you're going so fast. They're going so fast, and they can outturn you. 
Um, and so actually, you know, people are saying, oh, you know, you're just going to spam destroyers to death. I think actually, as a destroyer, you stand a pretty good chance, unless you just uh, straight line it. Well, yeah, yeah, that's true. But I have to say, against bot destroyers... Oh, yeah, no, easy peasy. They yeah. were very, they <laughs> yeah. were very... But as I said, they, they just straight line, so they're very easy to project. But if you just start doing a bit of, you know, a bit of zigzagging or, or go in a circle... Um, if you, especially if you have the ability to double back, and um, you know you're going in one direction and you and you reverse your direction as a destroyer, the planes are just not going to be able to um, get an accurate React. drop on you. So I, I think you're not helpless. Yeah, it's a problem, but you're not helpless. And I think comparative to um, how destroyers are plagued by planes at the moment. Oh, oh yes, yes. So here's the here's the important bit. A destroyer today can get insta-deleted against a capable carrier. Yeah. No matter what a carrier, no matter what a rework carrier attacks you with, if you're in a destroyer, it cannot, it is impossible that it will kill you in one strike. Mm. It needs to dedicate half a minute, one minute, and, just, and, just and, bullying you. And Exactly. And, and that is that, that carrier's only squadron. Yes. So it's it not can doing do anything nothing else. else. Yeah. Nothing else except bully a single destroyer, which of course gives your carrier the opportunity to come to your rescue, have much more time to for your team to respond to your assistance. And of course you can turn around and run back into an AA bot. Exactly. It's not the cross top, oh you've eaten two torpedoes and now you are dead mm -hmm. scenario. Not any And of course which, you know, in in the high tiers, some destroyers um, obviously they have smoke, but they also have some of them have defensive AA. So, True. Um, yes. If, if you're a competitive gearing, for example, you probably would take def AA. Mm. Um, and so let's get on to AA because that's, that's yes. a very interesting topic, <laughs> yes, and I know let's. I know you want to talk about it. So, um, so we both obviously we both play carriers, and we both uh, did you play surface ships much? I can't remember. Uh, I did play a few um, unintuitive. AA build. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So uh, I, I did not pick a Worcester, uh, give it full AA and take it out because, okay, that that was not that wouldn't pay a lot of. No, sure. But I did pick a few, uh, a few ships that are not known for their AA. So top so, tier, I took out the Haraguma, for instance. So um, I know one of the things that you were concerned about was uh, the fact that the ability to increase the range of your AA is, is gone. That's not there anymore. You can't do it. Um, Although some ships have res have received a flat uh, stock AA range increase, I think. Uh, the, the the maximum range that you can reach is much much more reduced than what you get on the live set. The, the 7 kilometer AA bubbles, for instance, are gone completely. Yeah, so that that whole what was the max before it like seven point two or something like that, wasn't it? So, yes, I think so. Seven point two, yeah. seven point five. And if you get so, especially in competitive, if you get two um, AA cruisers sitting at you know uh, opposite midpoints, or if you sort of yeah. like like between the you, A you and, B and between the, the B and C cap, yeah, you can cover a good chunk of the middle. And um, and okay, while you're not together, you you can't decimate the enemy uh, carrier. You can certainly make their life very difficult. Whereas now. AA seems to have been reduced down to sort of a more personal bubble. Um, but we, I think we both experienced that actually, and we have to caveat it with, it's not balanced yet. There is still a lot of balancing to be done. Yep. But I, so I played Worcester, and the enemy, I think it was a midway, um, managed to get through and strike me no problem at all. Um, and I was yes. full AA build, I had def AA running. Um, and yet, in the very next game, I played a carrier and I tried to drop a Worcester, and he destroyed all of my planes immediately. As soon as I flew into his bubble, bang, gone. Um, and okay, maybe I flew into some flak, but it just seemed to me that there's still a very, very high RNG element to the way that. In, in my works. in my experience, there was if I wanted to strike a ship, I would strike a ship. There, there was nothing the the AA gradually wears... The, let's put it this way. In my experience, there was no way a ship could prevent getting one strike. I, no, no, yeah. 
played like 50, 60 games during the test server, I never had a problem at getting that first strike in. Mm. From that point on, things were different, but... And it, that's an interesting point for balancing, actually, because you mentioned earlier that the, you know, the Japanese have the option of fewer torpedoes per run, but more runs. Mm-hmm. But if you're going back and forth and back and forth across an enemy ship, gradually the AA is going to knock them out. And so actually, in reality, <laughs> you actually have fewer torpedoes and the same number of runs because you're just going to yes. die. So yeah. that, that that makes balancing very difficult. But but you guarantee hits because you drop it. Across. That is true. That Yeah, that's very true. Um, but the different... So let's, let's get on... Uh, uh, should we get on to different characteristics or, or is there more AA to talk about? Yes, yes, please. I, I want to address the long range. Go for it. So the the long and medium ranges work like this. Uh, the ship generates every second, the couple of seconds, that's exactly clear, but every every quantum of time, it generates a number of AA puff, which cause massive damage to pl if the planes are caught within their radius. And just a quick uh, question, did you find did you find that it was easy to dodge flak? Not really. I found it more easy to bait flak. Uh, the sense that flak is generated along the trajectory of your airplane. Mm. So if you so if you was hack, um, you can trick the flak into generating in one direction, then twist around and fly into the other direction. Mm, sure. If you fly in a straight line, if you if you fly in a straight line, the flak is going to be generated along that straight line. Because I found that personally. And this was my fault. I, w I was basically ignoring the flak. I was just mm. my brain was just seeing it as a, a graphical element and, and not an actual dangerous yeah, no. thing I must no. avoid. Um, the, uh, and the thing is, the thing is, if you see the flak, it's missed. Well, <laughs> In yeah, my yeah, experience, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like absolutely. if you hear the bullet, yeah. uh, it missed you. Yeah, so much. I found it more effective to fly into the flak. Mm. No, yeah, chase so. chase the splashes as they did. Yeah, in oh, I Second see what World you mean. War. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see what you mean. Uh, the thing is, if that if that flak, the, the number of flak puffs that are generated are very few at this, based on current balance. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get like three or four puffs if you're on a destroyer, um, seven puffs if you're on an AA cruiser, that sort of, thing. and they are generated over a very wide area there is a very small chance that you are going to lose a lot of planes but there is no consistency in long run. exactly yeah so it is it is the same sort of it's the same criticism that you could levy again for instance japanese destroyers which are the torpedo boats mm -hmm. they can do massive amount of damage if they hit with their torpedo yeah it's which, all, all or nothing and there is no guarantee yeah. will hit with so you could, for instance, say stay within the long-range anti-aircraft aura of a Worcester, of a max added Worcester, okay, and take no damage whatsoever if you do not run into a, into a puff, which I find very problematic, especially if you have ships that are built along, uh, around their long-range anti-aircraft. Um, the dual-purpose uh, American light cruisers, for instance, that are built around their guns. The um, the duck line of Japanese destroyers, for instance, this is a person that are built around their 100 millimeters. Um, these ships no can no longer critically affect the 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 enemy carrier because they can only do consistent damage when the um, airplanes enter their short range bubble, which causes consistent damage over time. Yeah. And the planes are so fast, and they strike so fast that they don't stay within the short range aura at all. So something I like noticed it, um, playing the Worcester with the short range and medium range um, aura damage was that mm -hmm. I was doing a lot of damage to the planes. I could see the you know numbers coming up like 500, 600. Yes. But I didn't kill a single plane. Yes. And because the planes are infinite, effectively. Mm -hmm. um, even if I'd shot down one plane, I'm thinking, well, whoop de doo you know, he's going to be back in a minute with a, with a whole new, um, what? a whole new flight. Um, and so, actually, if he managed to strike me anyway, and I'm killing the planes as they go away, yes, that's that basically means I've done nothing. One technique. So you know that if you press 
that you know that if you give the command to your squadron to return to the carrier, the squadron flies up and yeah. out of any yeah. anti-aircraft bubble. Sure. You know that. Yeah. So, but one yeah. one instinct I had when I first started playing it, before I realized, no, hang on, you know, I do know vaguely what I'm doing, was um, because of the uh, the the zoning um, left right ability to to buff one side or other of your AA. Mm -hmm. I was encouraged um, to actually park on the map border facing left right so that planes are going to always be coming first from from one side and then just buff that side of my AA. Yeah, but but then you realize that your AA does not And then you realize <laughs> and then you realize you're a million miles from the battle. Yeah, um, that so so that you you quickly realize that doesn't work. But but th this this left right thing. So in my experience uh, as the carrier especially playing torpedo bombers, you tend to attack left, right, left, right, left, right because you're flying back and forth across because it takes too much time to circle all the way around and go back around to the same side again. Mm -hmm. um, and so I I just, I get the impression that most players aren't going to bother with it um, because there's more, you know, there's just as much chance of someone attacking you on the weak side as there is on the strong side. Exactly. Uh, you have to be on the ball all the time yeah. and you need to get the new manual control, second, uh, the new manual control anti-aircraft mm. skill which allows you to switch sides quickly yeah because if you give the order to switch sides right after the airplanes have flown over you and up the other side mm. and if you're in a battleship take like eight yeah. ten seconds to switch that's too long in a destroyer you can do it in two or three seconds yeah, yeah. but again destroyer and so I think maybe that will be one of the things that um, sets some people apart and above other people would be their ability Quite to possible. manage that well. Quite possible. Um, but it, but in my opinion, for AA to be relevant, because right now the only relevant AA, in my opinion, are fighters. Ah, well, let's talk about that, because uh, we I know we both like that mechanic. So uh, yes, let's talk about that. So I very quickly realized that... Mm -hmm. um, the, especially in competitive play, using those deployable um, T key fighters um, from your from your squadrons is going to be absolutely pivotal to the the way the match goes. Uh, after after my first ten games, it was clear to me that everybody who says that there is no tactical element to the new carriers has no idea what they're talking. About. Yeah, I'm absolutely. Sorry. Yeah. The, so uh, the the way you can support your fleet with these new fighters is amazing. They are essentially perma stray fighter. It's yeah, and, and the the I noticed that the range, or the diameter of the range is listed, at, or the radius is listed as three kilometers. Yes, but the, once they lock, but yeah. once they lock onto a squadron, yeah, they chase you <laughs> a long way. For, 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 yes, they do. Yeah, um, so you just have to basically avoid the area. But if you do happen to stray into it, that's it. You know, you, you, that's it. Your stuff. Yeah, yeah, your, your squadrons. Yeah, uh, you either and, recall it immediately or. Mm -hmm you suffer massively. So I found myself doing maybe three things with those fighters. One was dropping it on myself. Um, to, to all Although you don't have to, because no. the carriers have a... No, they, new yeah, carriers they, can they drop do. patrol fighters. Yeah. Um, and actually, the, the American ones last for a long time. It's like ten minutes. Uh, um, five or six minutes. Just, yeah, yeah. I don't. So, but but yeah. So, if you think you might be being uh, struck Targeted. at some point, um, yes. you can certainly drop a, an extra defensive bubble, which is quite handy. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing was obviously dropping it to cover blobs of your own ships, um, or maybe a sole battleship who's gone off on their own. Yes, or a sole destroyer who's about to be bullied. But that's very difficult because the planes are static in terms of where they patrol. Yes, and the but one the ship you want to defend either yeah. needs to get into that yeah. circle eventually and, or stay yeah. there. So you need to preempt where they're going to go, and um, or just rely on the fact that they're going to be intelligent enough to park within it. Um, but one thing that I put into the uh, the comments on the feedback was, can we please have the ability to tag those T fighters to a friendly ship to say, please follow this ship? Yes. Um, yes. Just that, like that you can would be a good game. idea. Yeah. Because you know that's one of the purposes. And then the third thing, particularly using the attack aircraft because they're so fast, was to zoom off because you're so quick. Zoom off to the other side of the map, find the enemy carriers' planes, um, and if they're not attack craft, they'll be much slower than you are. And kind of head them off, drop a drop a fighter, yes, um, and just and annihilate them. Completely, um, completely deny that was a game. Yeah, and then you're you're still there to be able to zoom back and forth and spot things. Um, 
so so I think yeah the the fighters are going to be a really interesting mechanic particularly among the better players. Also I like the fact that each attack plane type so attack aircraft torpedo bombers dive bombers has has limited uses of the fighter consumable. So you can rush off with your attack aircraft and drop fighters twice. Yeah. You can use fighters on your torpedo bombers twice. You can use fighters on your dive bombers twice. So you cannot play the entire game with, say, just torpedo bombers no. and expect to have fighter cover all game round. Absolutely. Uh, you need to switch it. You have six fighter uses for the entire game, plus the fighters that you have to carry. Yeah. And you can only use these six uses if you switch it, switch it up between attack plane types. Yeah, which is exactly. which I very much. Yeah, no, I, I like that as well. Um, so talking about the attack planes, then. So um, spotting something that occurs to me as being a bit of a problem. Um, I mean, it, you know, our clan is in the middle of clan battles at the moment, and it's entirely possible that that this new reworked version of carriers will become a part of clan battles. Um, mm -hmm. and maybe you can take you know one or two into a battle. The attack planes are so fast that you can get over to the enemy team and spot all of them Everything. within yes. a few seconds. And you can you can start attacking. Uh, just for uh, reference, I timed this. Mm. You can drop your first rocket on target thirty to thirty-five seconds after the game. Starts. Wow. It's that fast. So, so normally in clan battles, it, it's typical not to spot any enemy until maybe two and a half, three minutes two, into the game. Yeah. Yes. So, so you can imagine the situation. You're in a, a Worcester or a Des Moines, something a bit squishy. Mm -hmm. and, and you and you're spotted. You're yeah. spotted in spawn. You're that. trying and you're trying to get up to an island. You're going to get nowhere near that island. Nope. Enemy Montana or Yamato or whatever Blast you across them. is gonna. And if if it's a good player, they are going to hit you. And so. I personally, I think they're going to have to do something like um, delay the ability to launch planes at the beginning of the match or something like that because having the entire enemy team spotted, and I know it's going to go both ways, but I think that would just almost rule out taking the very squishy cruisers um, because they're just going to get one-shotted. Or... or, or around it or get a gearing into your team and smoke the cruiser as oh, it yeah. approaches oh yeah you know of course there's always going to be play and counterplay because obviously you know if, if you can do that to the enemy team they can do it to you um but it's just going to discourage people from playing those kind of ships um, yes if they're it's, it's going to become the new destroyer remain spotted thing so yeah no i think that spotting cruisers at the beginning of competitive battles and also randoms to a certain extent will become the new Meta carrier, first, so. carrier spots the destroyers meta. Um, it will be carrier Quite spots possible. the citadel -able ships meta. Let's talk about this thing with the the even tiers. Yes. Um, because this I, this doesn't make sense to me. So um, for those that don't know, the the carriers on the the third round of the test have been reduced down to being every other tier. So for tiers four, six, eight, and ten. Tiers. Three, uh, would it be three? No, tiers five, seven, uh, and nine have been removed. Um, so there'll only be four carriers in a line. Now, bear in mind that the the objective of this rework was to encourage people to play the carrier line um, and to get people playing that style. If you have to play the tier fours, which are frankly awful. Utterly. Utterly awful. If you have to play that tier four, for, twi for twice yes. or three times as long to get to the tier six, you are potentially going to get very frustrated and very bored, and you're just going to think carriers are terrible. Yes. Whereas from playing the test, we know that actually the tier eight and ten are actually really good fun. Are amazing. Yeah. Yes. Very, very. The, so, so what do you think about that? The new carrier gameplay gives me the same fun vibes as the low tier carrier gameplay, now. but there is, but the whole show now the. Was it the and the Langley? Yeah, they are useless. Oh, totally useless. I, yes, it occurred to me that I spent. What was I playing? I was playing. I can't remember which one it was because they're both awful. But I, I spent, you know, a good two or three attack runs, which is you know a few, several minutes of play. And I did as much damage as a cruiser could do in maybe two salvos in a few seconds. Yes, 
Uh, I spent games where I didn't miss a single drop. Continuous damage out mm. for the entire game uh, in the whole show. 30,000 damage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's like it's, a good game. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I, I realize that you can go for percentile damage and go after the destroyers and the cruisers. That will give you better XP rewards, but it feels like you have no influence on the game whatsoever. And that is not a pleasant experience. And and will be extended. And, and yes. so I just, I just it, wonder... It, it, will be, it will be like playing two carriers. You, you'll have to grind experience... Mm. Uh, the, the experience equivalent of two tiers yeah. in a in a ship that has and no influence the, whatsoever. The, the grind from four to six isn't isn't that bad normally. Um, but put yourself in the, in the shoes the, of a player who has never played carriers or maybe tried carriers the old version and mm -hmm. didn't like it, and they're like, oh, okay, I'll I'll try the new version of carrier play. Let's just see what it's like. But they're probably going to be fairly negative in their mindset to start with. Yeah. And they they open up the you know they they play the whole show and after a couple of battles they're convinced that it's a complete waste of time and they just can't do anything and yet they have to it's not like when you play a, a normal rubbish tier four because quite a lot of tier fours are rubbish yes but uh, you, you grind like twelve thousand damage yeah and then uh, you, you twelve thousand xp and you jump to tier five and and you think oh better. it's a new ship and even yeah. if that one is rubbish yes it's still, still another step yeah, yes exactly. And so, I really question this decision. I, I think do you know, it's going to put a lot know of people how off. The, do you know how the, the was of the whole rework to make learning carriers easier? Yeah. It doesn't. Th th this, is, this is what annoyed me. This is what partly annoyed me for these early tiers. I had to play through the Hosho and through the Ryuja and through the Shikaku to get to the Hakuryu. And when I reached the Hakuryu in the test server, I still had no idea how the rocket... Uh, no, sure. Okay, so the <laughs> yeah, the Hosho right now and the Langley, if I do not have torpedo bombs. No, they don't. You get rockets and dive bombs, and you get armor-piercing dive bombs. Hosho, which overpen everything, which overpen everything, and you get high-explosive dive bombers in the Langley, which are pretty good, I think, but still anemic. Well, the, on... the the fire and flooding chance is quite low on the carriers in general, I think. Yes, yes. So, but but at least you can do consistent damage on cruisers instead of you know bouncing battleship armor, not of aura overpenning destroyers with an armor piercing. Yeah. The you don't learn how to drop torpedoes tier four. You have a very small rocket attack force that just doesn't teach you to pay attention, uh, take it slow, and line up your attack run for like three or five kilometers till you can get the full targeting. You don't learn that. No. The important thing, I think, for the new carrier system is not to learn the basic mechanic. That is fine. Okay, you, you might to learn this eventually. The, the tactics are the important. And I don't see how the how the the low tier carriers teach you these vital new carrier attacks. No, by, you, gi by giving you're you are the... not you are not rewarded appropriately for doing things right, and you are not punished when you do things wrong. No, and you get I th a thirty thousand yeah. uh, you get a thirty thousand damage game in the best of cases. Yeah, and you have no idea whether you did whether no. you did good or whether you did bad. And I, and I think Wargaming do that a lot where where their solution to trying to encourage new players is to uh, is to do exactly that. Reduce the punishment for playing badly and um, it's just point and click gameplay. And I, and the rockets particularly definitely encourage that. It's just like, well, hey, fire some rockets. And even if you do no damage, it kind of looks cool. And I, I do wonder whether they're relying a little bit too much on the it looks cool factor. Whereas I think if you restricted those two low tier ships to just torpedo bombers, you would end up with skilled players at the end of it. Yes. Um, In my, you, you said something very, uh, very insightful uh, before when you said that the torpedo bomber lineup, when you get into the, when you hit the deck with the torpedo bombers and you start the attack run, takes several kilometers of your planes by flying yeah. 
straight line yeah. and you see the the cone just getting narrower and mm -hmm. narrower mm -hmm. and narrower and then there's this huge there's the the aircraft the enemy aircraft carrier ahead of you or a battleship yeah and you your, see heart's, your, your heart's fully thumping and yeah it's yeah. i'll tell you what it's the same as i get the same thrill from playing a stealthy destroyer it's yes. that it's that how close can i get yes to get that big yes. hit and and it's exactly if, the same if low tier carriers had that that would teach you how exactly because that would it there would be a clear visual indication that you are not ready to attack you are not ready to attack now you are ready to drop the you need to learn to set up a straight attack run for yeah. any yeah i think that low car i think that low tier carriers would win a bit would benefit more from having uh, from a teaching perspective having torpedo bombers rather than for instance rockets yeah which and, are also not very historically accurate and i think a lot of that could be mitigated with some kind of tutorial um where mm. you know they just set up basically an operation that has um bots you know going left to right or whatever and, and you just have to line up the various attack runs and it gives you some visual clue as to how you're supposed to do that so basically it gives you the gray guidelines um that you don't get in the live game the attack so run here yeah, and the attack so you, run you can just get your eye in and um and gradually get better some kind of like basically a shooting gallery um i think that would be quite beneficial i don't know you could do that in the training room but i think they need to have it with an overlay with tutorials and and it's something you know one of my main i, I think wargaming generally do a very good job but i think one of my criticisms is that they rely entirely on the community to do mm, to teach uh, the newbies. teaching yeah and um and i know they started to do a lot of those those videos recently that are very good um but I think there needs to be something in the game because a lot of people will miss those. Um, that says, you know, like the first time you go to play a carrier or the new style carrier, it yes. pops up Stop. and says, here's yes. a tutorial. You probably want to play this. Um, I think that would fix a lot of problems. So one last question then. Mm -hmm. Compared to the, the current style carriers, is it more or less fun? More fun. Yes. I, I think no I no, no question. That. No question. From, especially from the perspective of carrier player, um, if you want to, they need to fix the anti-aircraft for it to be equally fun for the surface ship perspective. But from a carrier perspective, uh, especially at high tiers, this is much more fun. And I, I really think that it fits the theme of fits the theme of what? Sorry, of the game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it, it's a game. Yeah, I mean, people have to remember that. It's supposed to be fun. And personally, playing the high-tiered current carrier gameplay, I don't like pressing, pressing battle. And I know some people do like that kind of pressure, that RTS pressure of, of actions per minute, that kind of gameplay. I hate that. That's, that's not my thing at all. And that is purely personal preference from my point of view. I hate things like... Um, you know, Command and Conquer and, and those kind of top-down games because I find them very difficult. Um, I, so for me personally, I find this a lot more enjoyable. I, I come from a StarCraft background. I know, yeah, I know. So, yeah, uh, I like the RTS. So, I like the RTS playstyle. Uh, my criticism is not... Uh, my criticism against the old system is not the concept of the RTS. It's the implementation. But it's the implementation, yeah, yes. Absolutely. Because in StarCraft, you did mention APM. In StarCraft, the system is so responsive that you can have like 600 actions per minute, yeah. the, the best players in the world. Yeah. Yeah. That is, you can, you can give your units 10 commands per second and they respond immediately. Mm -hmm. the, uh, unfortunately, the current, the, the live server system is not the the interface is not that responsive for the carriers right now and it immediately impacts the feel of the game yeah, yeah. It feels clunky so, it feels so, bad so i guess uh, the, the question is more um is the new rework better than the poorly implemented rts carrier play i think so probably yes would it be better than a well-implemented RTS carrier play? I would say probably not. I, I think uh, prob probably not. 
Yeah, I, I think a, a slick RTS carrier play would complement the game really well. It's just that that yes. interface is so frustrating to work with. And and the thing that, that separates the good players from the extremely good players is that they know the quirks of the interface. Mm. Um, they can describe so, exactly how all the you know little nuances and bugs work. You know, you know how you get the uh, the icon fly, and it's very possible that your planes are not there; they are spread around that area differently. Yeah, you might give an order. Yeah. You, you might give a strafe order ahead of your planes. Yeah, but. In fact, some of your planes are already in the strafe zone, yeah, exactly. so they have to turn around exactly. and strafe again. Yep. That would be unthinkable in any No, yes. absolutely. Okay, then. So I think in summary, I would say that th I'm optimistic, I think. Oh, yeah. Thumbs up. With a bit of rework. Now, one of the big factors is going to be when is this going to be released? We don't know. Mm -hmm. We have no idea. Um, it's, it's not ready to be released. It's definitely not ready. Um, I mean, I, I playing on the test server, I got... Uh, a couple of games where I crashed out three times and yes. my planes were invisible and I got stuck in my ship. So just on the point of view of the bugs, it's not ready. But not let's... ready the bugs and definitely not ready on the bugs. No. But if they keep working at it for a few more months, a few more rounds of testing, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm quite optimistic. I think it could be quite Same. good. If they rush it, it's not going to work. It's, no, it's going to be horrible. So I am optimistic, but I'm scared of an early release. Is that where you are? Uh, pretty much, yes. I think I'm. If if they release this early, if the bug side are not ironed out very well, uh, this could really hit the game. This is not a, a Graf Zeppelin fiasco. This is a core mechanics problem. And I'm sure they they're. Need... I'm sure they're aware of the importance of that. But I am yeah, I, I, slightly I hope, concerned. I hope. You know, they've got an artificial deadline to hit, and uh, that they uh, they'll rush to hit it. Um, which I don't think would, you know, there's no one, there's no winners in that scenario. Um, we already have carriers in the game; they, that can keep going, um, and they can introduce this when it's ready. Um, I don't think there's any question that it will be introduced. It definitely will be introduced. I don't think we can get anything but this free work. They yeah, no, it's, it's going to be this, this in some form. Yeah, um, but but it it it's fine. It's a good rework. If it's implemented properly. Exactly. Yeah, it needs to be polished. There's promise there, though. The, the core concept is fine. Yeah. And I'll say it again. The, the criticism that this new system takes away tactical thought has no basis. Absolutely not. No, nope. there is definitely a learning curve. You, There are definitely multiple parts of the mechanic where you could outskill an opponent and mm. you could use your skill and experience to support your team. Absolutely. It, it's not point and click. Well, I think um, we'll wrap it up there. So thank you, thank you very much for joining me. We've talked for uh, way more than I thought we would do. Um, so uh, I, I, hope, I hope everyone's uh, enjoyed that. And um, if there is a fourth round of testing, I really hope there is going to be a fourth round of testing. I hope they don't just release this. Um, then obviously we will cover that in more detail and we will see you then. Thanks, Anyok. Yes.